Hey guys and welcome back to the second part of lists. In this video we'll be covering operators, functions and methods. So let's get started. So similar to string operators, list operators have similar characteristics actually. So here you have the addition where you can add two lists together and basically that does the concatenation of lists. So the second uh, list gets added at the back of the first list to create a one large list. Uh, list also provides multiplication. The order doesn't matter, but um, the second argument must be an integer similar to the string. Otherwise, you'll get an error. And what this multiplication with an integer do is just repeat uh, all the items in the list uh, by how many times the integer value is. Okay, so here's an example of three times a list. Then it's just going to repeat this list uh, three times. Okay. And the next one uh, is uh, this in operator. This one is a what we call a boolean operator, where the returning result is boolean. Okay, so let, let's have a look at an example of what it does. Um, here. Okay. So um, three in one three five. This is true, right? But we can also do something like. 4 in 1, 3, 5, this will be false, right? And if we want to check the type of that, let's just save that into a variable. So answer equals that. And just double check that false is saved in the answer. It's true. And then we can take the type of answer. This is class Boolean. So we haven't learned Boolean yet, which will be covered in the um, conditions video, which is a couple of videos away. Um, but uh, this is very useful to check whether an object belongs to the list or not. So you can check the membership uh, using the list. Okay, so keep that in mind. And there are a few um, very useful functions for the list. Uh, in particular, there's four of them. The first one is the length. So you have seen the use of the length function uh, in the first part of the list video. Um, but essentially what it does is just count the number of items that are inside the list. So this, um, so I say print length of the list that contains one to three, this will print six and so forth. There are some um, numeric operators that you can do over the list items. For example, there is a sum function that you can apply onto the list. Basically what it's going to do is add up all the numbers inside the list and give you the final product. Um, do note that you cannot use this function to do string concatenation. Um, it doesn't allow you to do that. Instead, if you want to do that for a bunch of strings, you should look up um, string.join uh, method, which is part of the string methods. Okay. And lastly, there's a couple of uh, functions like min and max, which binds the minimum value and the maximum value inside the list. And Basically, uh, these sum, min, and max will work over uh, lists containing values, including integers and floats, but it's not going to work well if it has, contains some other data types like strings or anything else. Okay, so just remember that one. And in addition to this, we have uh, different uh, list methods. So there's a list of list methods. Um, Lists, because it's working with generic objects uh, as a contain container containing generic objects, it doesn't have as many um, methods as strings do. However, uh, these are sufficient for you to um, uh, manipulate lists and use them. So let's have a look at uh, some of those. Uh, let's create some quick um, nums equals one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, uh, that's enough. Okay. Um, so I can do something like uh, help list dot uh, say pop. Let's see what the pop does. And it says if you give an index as an option, then it's going to remove the item at that index. But if you don't give the index by default, it will remove the last item. So let's just quickly check nums dot pop. To that, eight has been returned. So this is one of the uh, method that returns you something. And if I check the content of the nums again, now the value eight is gone. 
I can also remove, um, say, index 2. At index 2, there's a value 3, and if I check the nums again, value 3 has been removed. Okay. A key note here is that many of the list of uh, methods uh, will modify the content uh, and then actually return none. So uh, do read the help of those methods before you use them, because sometimes they will not return you anything and just do something within the list itself. Okay. So now we're going to look at some uh, aliasing problems. So here's an example which I have code here. I'm just going to use their first names. So what it's trying to do is create names as a list and I have another list that's going to, well, what we think is going to copy uh, from our original list. And what we're going to do is, all right, we're going to uh, modify our original names list and then print and see what they do, right? So let's run this. So what's happening here is that, oh, oops, shouldn't have that there. So what's happening, oh my gosh, what's going on? I don't need this. Aha, now, <laughs> so run this again. So what's happening here is that we have modified the names list only in the code, but when we look inside others name, it also has been changed, which we didn't expect, right? So this is an aliasing problem in the list. So let's have a look why this happens. So remember our memory space, when we create variables, they get stored in the dictionary and they have references to the values they store. And we have seen how the list object is stored. There are references of references. Um, same idea here. If I, when we create names, it create a list object, and each uh, slot has a references pointing to uh, the strings that we created for this one. And when we say uh, other names equals names, essentially what's happening here is that um, other names is pointing the same uh, list as the names do. So when we modify the names list, essentially other names will also be affected because they are pointing at the same object. So this is what we call an alias, where two different names are pointing at the same object. Okay, so we don't want to, uh, we don't want uh, multiple names pointing at the same object, so we want to avoid this aliasing problem, so we will cover the solution here. So this arises, this problem arises because uh, object B is immutable and if B is mutable, then by changing this, it may also affect A as well. So what we want to do is, rather than pointing at the same object, we want to make a copy. Um, and this can be achieved using slicing. Okay, so let's make a copy in the wing. So here we will edit this with the square bracket, colon, and close square bracket. And remember, if we don't specify the numbers before and after the colon, then it's going to copy from the beginning to the end, right? And let's run this now. So this time I am actually not having A here. So what's happening here is that I have created a, a new set of containers, which contains the same references to the points, but now I have two different containers. So although those references are pointing to the same objects, the F, M, and C, uh, I have two different containers to do that. So I can modify one container, uh, which will not uh, modify the other one. So this is a way of avoiding some of the aliasing problems. However, you have to remember that this is what we call a shallow copy, which means uh, if we have more depths in terms of the references, then those references may not be updated and therefore you can still have the same aliasing problem um, if we have a higher uh, layer. For example, using a list of lists. Okay. Um, however, uh, we will not worry about this uh, for now. So the next thing is what we call a constructor. So previously we have seen um, the use of functions like int and then we can type in like 34 point 
point something, which will convert this value into integer by removing the um, decimal points, or even having strings that contain numbers, it will give us the integer type. Okay, and these are uh, special functions um, that we call a constructor. So remember when we called uh, that all the the data that we deal with in Python are objects. Um, then each object, if you try to convert another type to your own, then we have to use this uh, function, special function called constructor. So list also has a special function uh, as a constructor, just called list. Okay, and essentially we bring in other data type and convert it into list. And if we pass in a string, then it's just going to chop uh, individual characters and save character by character as a list. You can also pass in other iterable types. Uh, for example, this is a tuple. Uh, then it's going to convert it into a list. Tuples we'll cover in the next video. And also range is another function, uh, but do look up the help of the range to see what it does. Essentially, it creates uh, incremental uh, numbers specified by the input. So here it's going to create uh, a number starting from 1 up to 7, but not including 7. Okay, so this will return a list containing numbers 1 up to 6. Okay. Uh, actually, ignore this line. We will not be looking at object-oriented programming in this unit. Uh, <clears throat> and again, list is an unprotected reserved name. So if I type list here, you can see that it highlights as a light blue, unlike like a def, which is a thick blue. So thick blue colors are protected names, whereas light blue colors are unprotected names. So you can overwrite them to be used as a variable name or another function name, but it is a good idea not to do that. Okay, but nevertheless, um, just a key point to remember. And for the last thing we'll be looking at is splitting and stripping lines. Um, this is associated with strings, but uh, since uh, the result of splitting is a, a list, that's why I moved it here. So let's have a look at the strip first. Strip, what it does is basically it gets rid of uh, the trailing um, characters you specify at the beginning and at the end. And by default, when you call a strip method, it will, re uh, it will strip out all the white spaces, including the new line characters and tabs. So let's create uh, some string. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, so we have three blahs and S. So if I print S, I can't really tell, especially at the end, how many empty spaces that I have, right? So sometimes it's a good idea to get rid of those um, white spaces before and after. So we can easily do that by print s dot strip. Strip is a method, so it's like a function you need to give it a bracket. And by doing this, now I have got rid of the white trailing spaces before and after. Okay. Uh, of course, you can strip um, more characters. So by default, it's a white space, but by adding, say, I want to strip B and H as well, then it's going to get rid of uh, this B and H at the end. So we'll double check that. So here, B is gone and H is gone. However, B's and H's inside the string will not be stripped. So strip will only work at the very beginning and at the very end. Once it stops working, then it's going to ignore all the occurrence of uh, those stripping letters inside the string. Okay, so that's one string and split does the similar thing. By default, it will split by uh, white space. So let's have a quick look. Uh, S dot split. Okay, and here you can see that it produces a list. So it returns a list which you can save it to a variable and use it later. So this is uh, a good a string method if you want to tokenize your string. So for example, I want to count a number of words in my uh, sentence, then you can probably do the split uh, in conjunction with like a strip to get rid of some white spaces and some punctuations uh, and then count how many words there are. Okay, uh, but you are not uh, restricted to only stripping with the white space. You can uh, split using different characters. For example, I want to strip uh, split 
using letter H. I can do this, then what it's going to do is every occurrence or it finds a letter H, that's where it divides the string. So here you can easily see that blah and then H was here, it uh, splits here, another one, another one, and even uh, a string with just empty spaces is considered as a, a substring that gets split by H. Okay. This is very useful later if we want to work with files, for example, like a comma separate file, and then we can split by comma, then it's going to tokenize all of the items uh, that are associated with the uh, uh, columns in that file. Okay. But uh, we'll deal with more about file handling when we um, go to those videos, which is a bit later, so we'll cover that. Anyway, so that's all the basics for the lists. Um, and uh, here a bit of the string. Uh, in the next video, we will be looking at tuples, right? I'll see you there.